Hello, this is Reward Audio and we are continuing Preamplifier Week and looking more deeply into the operation of the Alnic L8500 OTL OCL Preamplifier. So I'm going to share with you what I do think about it, what are the uh, good things in it and what are those things that uh, I think uh, could have been made in a different way or uh, maybe I, what what I will share with you is how I would have done it if if I want to build something uh, similar or use these tubes that they have used. What would I use those tubes that they do? And uh, so we talked about the OTL OCL aspects and the single ended push pull aspects at the first video. You can go back to it if you haven't seen it. So now true dual mono design that that's something really excellent and uh, what we can see here they don't show any other detail on the power supply but you can see here is one power transformer and another power transformer and uh, and then they list the tube complement and sadly it does not include rectifier tubes so it means this is a solid state rectified uh, preamplifier and there's no uh, chokes either so it means that it's solid state regulated as well and as such it will have a sound that's more on the mechanical side probably it will give like a lot of uh, raw power but uh, refinement not really uh, what i would have done instead of uh, dual mono supply here to keep like a similar cost and similar size and weight i would have used a, a single much beefier power transformer and would have added at least one choke and uh, and a rectifier tube to supply the high voltage for the uh, preamplifier that would have made uh, a unit with a sound that's much more in line with what with what those people who buy such gear imagine how it would sound i guess or maybe they they don't think like me that's that's all right no worries um they added 41 step silver contact compact constant impedance attenuator what that what's that that's the volume control and it's 41 step ah uh, guys um uh, Actually, I don't like having that many steps on a volume control. Uh, it's it's just like a lot of clicking, very slow. If you want to change the volume, it takes ages. Maybe here, if you use your hands, probably you can turn it fast enough. But if there is a, a remote for it, it says yes, it's remote controlled. It will take on the remote ages until you can go up like 41 steps up or down and, uh, and and for me that that's not convenient at all and also when you have that many steps the differences between each step is really tiny and what I have noticed is that uh, often at the low end of the spectrum when when you listen to quiet volumes the steps are not enough uh, and when you listen at high volumes then you you turn one step higher and nothing happens you have to just keep on cranking and adding multiple steps before you notice anything is happening uh, how could people fix this it would be much better if they would uh, uh, talk to uh, someone who who is a biologist and who knows the human auditory system and uh, design a proper uh, S uh, proper uh, stepping for the attenuators so this is what i have done for my autoformer it has only 14 steps and and those 14 steps are much more useful than 60 or 40 or even 60 step uh, steps that people use in uh, in uh, in commercial units i'm much happier with just having 14 properly designed versus just a very high number but it's not not something that I would hold against anyone because this is what 
the entire audio industry uses everyone is just carbon copying each other's solutions and if you buy units commercially you are stuck with that if you want to DIY it you can do much better so uh, what else I think what I want to continue with right now as you see it has uh, balanced and single-ended outputs inputs as well and uh, and that's why they have the push-pull configuration for this amplifier it's really sad that they are using it as a single-ended uh, um, push-pull uh, because it's with, with the balance circuitry it should be really true push-pull uh, so I think they are missing out half of it or maybe they don't and they just use the term incorrectly and they think that uh, for for the uh, RCA, it's it's just a single-ended push-pull, and for the balanced, it's it's true push-pull. That's not what the text says. Maybe 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 that's what it is. I don't know. Anyway, so the marketing department could step up a little bit. Um, input impedance 10 kilo ohms, uh, frequency range 10 hertz to 90 kilohertz voltage gain plus 18 db so that's pretty good a lot of gain and uh, what as maximum output can put out 15 volts so it can put out really high level signals so if you have a, a power amplifier that that has a very uh, insensitive input and it requires high voltages to drive this little fellow will drive it happily and the output impedance is a mere 200 ohms so that really means that if you have a power amplifier that is 20 kilo ohms input impedance or higher it will work very well with it now power consumption is 120 watts now that's that's a boatload that that's a really really high figure for a preamplifier and it means this thing, compared to what it's doing, it's guzzling a crazy amounts of power. Why? Let's see why. Because it has two 6A and A tubes, two 12AU7s, and four 12B4As. <sighs> it's listed here as 12B4, but it's 12B4A. Uh, and and the, and the thing is so you would think it uses eight vacuum tubes but no it uses much more than that because both this and those tubes are double tubes so you are getting two tubes in each envelope so it's using 12 tubes uh, for the signal and uh, that's that's a lot and when we look at the details it also says that it uses uh, negative and positive feedback uh, to um, stabilize the output which is, is quite a handful to swallow um, and, and it tells us that it, they are going towards a mechanical sound so when you have this many uh, vacuum tubes it means that there is like a boatload of amplification happening during the way and and all these the number of these tubes will uh, would allow us much more than 18 db voltage gain you could easily get like uh, 60 db or more uh, from this uh, situation from this many tubes uh, i for the life of me i can't figure out why they use this many tubes um well i can figure out because they are using a load of negative feedback that's why they need it what uh however what i have not explained yet what makes this uh, unit uh, output capacitor less so basically let's go back to our uh, exemplary uh, schematics and here what you see is that when you have an output capacitor so this would be something similar at least the last stage so instead of the e 182 cc there we have the 12 uh, B4A tubes so a pair of 12 B4A is uh, operating like here these two tubes and instead of the capacitor we have the direct output uh, one being uh, 
actually uh, one being the output and and the ground it says it uses a floating ground so uh, we don't know how they float the ground what techniques they use however uh, what is really important that here be between uh, the cathode and the ground when we use a traditional single-handed push-pull then there's a big voltage differential if we would just connect it to the RCA jack then it would completely fry the power amplifier and the loudspeaker so you would have a smoking amp and the blown driver uh, as a result so what they do is that they have the output and they somehow float the ground but that's not an easy feat uh, uh, they, they, they say that they are using uh, some sort of regulation to get that and uh, uh, and that's a great thing, but I think uh, ultimately what that does to the sound, the, that regulatory me mechanism takes away more of the sound quality than a capacitor does. So if I would uh, develop a design like that, then I would not, because all that complexity, so more, most likely they have this boatload of tubes, and it says like... Uh, here uses the most sophisticated active balanced positive and negative feedback circuit in which a 6a and 8 pentode perfectly controls all the circuits entire operation with extremely low distortion and the greatest speed so basically they require a pentode to make uh, make it work and uh, throwing in an extra tube stage and now when you are going for the highest sound quality then all of you have experienced who have already traveled to that road that adding a single uh, stage is always uh, taking away from low level signal to taking away from signal clarity and what it has uh, what it offers us in exchange is uh, in the case of a preamplifier is the ability to uh, to give us a chance to uh, in this case to uh, not use a capacitor at the output and i have uh, very serious doubts that any kind of uh, complex uh, circuitry which which has two kinds of feedback loops plus an additional uh, tube stage. I can't imagine any scenario where it will offer a higher sound quality compared to uh, an equal value capacitor. However, what it does offer is a different kind of sound. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It offers you something that no other preamplifier does, and and uh, it it gives this unit a very unique sound that you are probably not getting with any other preamplifier. So, so what you get overall with uh, with this OCL configuration is something that that that's very unique. It it doesn't sound any like uh, like a, a capacitor output it doesn't sound like a, a transformer output preamplifier you have something different but is it better than a, a capacitor output or a transformer output mm, i would say that uh, most likely what you are getting because of this uh, amazing uh, plethora of, of vacuum tubes where does it list here you have a, a boatload of vacuum tubes uh, operating in here uh, for 12 b 4s at the uh, final stages this gives us uh, a tremendous uh, current drive and the ability to drive even the deadest uh, uh, solid state amplifier and bring them to life and and i think this is where this preamplifier can be useful to drive uh, solid state amplifiers and there it could be uh, your answer to the next level for those designs however if you go for a vacuum tube amplifiers power amplifiers then 
I would say that uh, th using this many tubes is, is just uh, wasting too much opportunity in the signal path. You are adding too much noise because each tube stage adds its uh, noise, adds its distortion, uh, adds its losses and and uh, here we have one, two, three, four, five stages per channel and and that's just too much uh, how if I would have uh, used these vacuum tubes I would have uh, used any of these ones but only a single tube so for example if I would use a 12 before I uh, uh, the best way to use the 12B4 as a preamp tube is uh, to use it, this tube, as the output stage of your DAC. And, and instead of putting it in a separate box and having a, a, an interconnect to drive it, and then you need a, an input tube to uh, compensate for the impedance mismatch or impedance difficulties created by the uh, interconnect cable so cut that out put this tube directly as the output stage for your DAC and uh, hook it up through a capacitor directly to the power amplifier and that sounds amazingly good and you do not have that whole uh, long journey uh, before that single stage and you do not have the uh, the negative feedback and positive feedback so that way you can use the 12 before tube to get you very natural sound this way uh, I suspect that you are getting a very highly sculpted sound a very unique sound and uh, and that's what a lot of people crave so if you want sound that no one else has this unit will give that for you but if you want a natural sound, like uh, the piano sound, like uh, uh, when you are listening to uh, a piano, let's say you have a, a nice piano at home, or you're playing cello, you have uh, music instruments at home, you are going every week to, to concerts, uh, to the opera, then you don't want this type of sound. But uh, when you want something very special, uh, then probably this will be your answer. So thank you guys for tuning in. And if you have heard this unit, please write it in the comments, share your experience. Uh, what do you think about it? So thank you. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.